Okay, today I've been doing some searches uh, in the eastern Kentucky area about missing, unsolved missing and murdered cases. And I had been focusing on some missing and murdered men in this region. But I came upon this and I wanted to share it because it's in the news at this moment. It's current. And it is about the discovery of DNA had led to the discovery of the identity of bones that were found and I wanted to tell this story and there's not a whole lot I was told to go to Facebook and look up the brother of the um, let's see this is a story about Michaela Colette and I have searched and searched for anything going back to the early part of when she went missing and what family members or friends may have thought might have led to her disappearance. But this is all that I have been able to find. This was from the uh, Levisa Laser. Kentucky State Police searching for a missing woman in Leslie County. Michaela Colette, age 21, a white Caucasian, a, well, Caucasian female, brown hair, brown eyes, 150 pounds, 5 foot 8. Um, missing since October the 24th, 2020. And here's all that I could find about it. Kentucky State Police Post 13 in Hazard, Kentucky are searching for a woman from Leslie County who has been reported missing for close to a month now. According to friends and family of Michaela Colette, age 21, of Hyden, Kentucky, the last day she was seen was October the 24th in the Middle Fork Road community of Leslie County. Michaela's disappearance for such a long time now has left her family and friends in total emotional agony, especially due to her being a single mother having left behind a young son. Um, Please let somebody know that you're okay, says her mother, Marissa Nance. I love you and I want you to come home. This was told to a Hazard TV station, WYMT. Lindsay, uh, Michaela's cousin Lindsay, who was also her closest friend, says she feels like that she, her efforts have not been enough. I've been on Facebook reaching out to friends, trying to find any information I can about her. I was also thinking about trying to get a group of people together to help go look for her. It's been almost a month since she went missing. Now, she went missing October the 24th. She was reported missing November the 2nd. So that's a full six or eight days later. So it might be that she was prone to like go away for a few days at a time. But having a young toddler son that I'm assuming she left with her relative, um, would she have gone and stayed gone for six to eight days without any contact? Is that the reason why the family waited so long to report her missing? Or did they even realize that she was missing? You know, she may not just have not been reaching out to anybody, and maybe they're so used to that, to go on a week or longer without speaking to each other, that they just didn't realize. You know, I don't know. But there were, there were circumstances, according to some posts that I read on Reddit in the comments, that the father of her little boy had been had died, and I don't know the circumstances were suspicious according to whatever was you know because I couldn't find any stories on it myself. There's so little, and I was so shocked and surprised that there was nothing on unsolved Appalachia because they they always keep up with these local cases. And I couldn't believe there was nothing on there about this girl. But um, Kentucky State Police say they received a missing person report 
on Michaela Colette on November the 2nd. Right now, police are gathering as much information as they can to find out where she might be. We're going to do everything we can to make sure she's found and is returned to her family, said Kentucky State Trooper Matt Gayhart. Um, anyone with any information? And then it just goes on. Here, here are some comments. Um, there are some freaks out there. Pippa Passes, which is in this area, is where that girl was kidnapped and killed, then raped in 1986. I don't know what any of that has to do with this. Here is someone who commented saying that they are Makola's cousin. I am Makola's first cousin, and anyone who knows anything... Please contact the family or the police. It seems like they just don't know what day of the week it is. When you bring her name up, I'm not going to stop until someone gives her location. Um, uh, let's see. I just pray that the cops find who did this to her. Or, work, or find her or who was responsible for this before I do. It's just pretty much somebody just kind of venting. But there was just so little information on what could have led to this girl's, you know, the circumstances around her disappearance. Um, I mean... It was rumored that there was something going on with the um, father of the child, that he had also died, and I guess there were some kind of mysterious circumstances or something around that. It was on Reddit, but I couldn't find anything that they were talking about. So... Um, let me go back to Reddit. So they found her they found her skull. So now this is from Reddit and this is from Un Unresolved Mysteries. The disappearance of Michaela Colette from Eastern Kentucky. This was published by Freudian, Freudian Slip Up uh, on the Unresolved Mystery Reddit thread. And this was published three days ago, which would have been the 15th, 16th of May, 2022. On Monday, Kentucky State Police announced a cold case from 2020 was solved with the help of DNA technology. The rapid DNA identification system helped police positively identify a woman who went missing in 2020. Michaela Colette went missing from Leslie County on October the 24th, 2020. In 2021, unidentified human remains, including a skull, were found by police and tested with the DNA system, which led to a partial female DNA profile. A Kentucky forensic scientist, Regina Wells, searched, researched the case further and determined the remains were those of Colette based on DNA. I found the missing person entry to Miss Colette, Colette and noticed that she went missing from the adjacent county where the skull was found. Michaela had physical characteristics consistent with the skull. So was it only the skull was found, no, no other parts of her body? Um... And that's pretty much it. Colette's family gave DNA samples to the lab, which led to the posit positive identification. Then you go on down to the comments. Now here is a comment from a girl that really doesn't give much for where she gathered this information from. Cynthia MWD, this is a mystery. After an admittedly brief search, I couldn't locate anything about, at all about her baby's father, Ben Hoskins' death. 
except a statement by Ben's brother Chris that just months after Michaela went missing, they found Ben Hoskins, who was the dad of the little boy, I guess. They found him dead. Does anyone know the circumstances surrounding Ben's death? Was he ever a suspect in her disappearance? An article linked below say that maybe up to six people have gone missing in Clay County where she was found since 2016 and two skulls were found within days of each other in March of 2021. Could there be a serial killer working in that area? Well, if you think about the number of people who have gone missing in eastern Kentucky, Crystal um, Hall, Crystal Hall Branham, or Crystal, I think her name's Crystal Branham from Pikeville, Candy Gonzalez from Prestonsburg, Valerie Hunt from Pike County. Um, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on of missing women. But there are also missing men as well, and that was where my focus had started this morning when I come across this story. And since it is in the news currently, I did want to go on ahead and share. Here is what I could find on this story it wouldn't let me open. There were two different articles, and it wouldn't let me open one of them. This is from the Enterprise, Nolan Group Media. The second skull found last year following a flood in the Redbird area of Clay County has been identified, according to Jared Becknell. Rapid DNA testing has confirmed the skull is that of Michaela Colette, age 21, of the Middle Fork area of Redbird, um, the coroner says they are hope they are hoping to have confirmation. Okay, this they do have confirmation. It is her skull. They are hoping to have confirmation on the first skull that was found last year in the next coming weeks. Both skulls were found following severe flooding in March of last year. Since 2016, six people in Clay County and the Redbird area have all been reported missing and none have ever been found. Well, they found this girl, and this is the only one out of all these. But they did find another skull, and they're still trying to get DNA, I guess. On March 27, 2016, Angela Smith, age 30, a resident of Little Creek in Clay County, was reported missing and last seen on, at her home on Easter Sunday. A few months later, Cecil Burkhart, age 30, was reported missing from the Oneida area. He, too, was never seen or heard from again. The Enterprise also confirms on February the 3rd, 2018, Stephen Best, age 38, of Beattyville, was reported missing and last seen in the Redbird community of Clay County. He has also never been found. Two years later, on October the 22nd, 2020, David Campbell, age 49, of Big Creek, was last seen walking on the roadway near his home. Two days later, 21-year-old Michaela Collette was reported missing from the Middle Fork area of Leslie County in the Redbird community. On December the 15th, 2020, Robert Eastep, age 69, left his home to go deer hunting in the Hector community and has never been seen or heard from again. On March the 6th, two people hunting for mushrooms, dry land fish we call them around here, two people hunting for mushrooms found a skull located at a bridge on Kentucky 66 in the Leslie Clay County line. That occurred after a flood and following a second flood only a few days later. So I'm assuming that they're suggesting that these skulls had been buried and that the, that the flooding had washed them up or maybe they had been well hidden along a creek bank someplace and the water washed them up. Uh, 
I'm going to do a little bit more research into these other missing persons cases in this area and I will tie it all together with a, with a second video. I couldn't find anything about this young man who was supposed to have been the father of the of the little boy and what happened to his death at his death. But as of right now, out of the six people who went missing in that area in Clay County in that time frame, only one has been identified. Uh, only one, two skulls have been found. The other four, uh, as far as I know, nothing that I've read so far have have suggested anything about them. Their remains haven't been found. But this one skull turned out to be this young 21-year-old girl. And the other skull, they're still waiting confirmation. My guess would be... See, this this page right here is the exact same page. It would not let me open it. I had to get the link from Reddit, and it let me go to it. But without the link, it wouldn't take me there. So let me go back here and see. Who was the other missing people? Stephen Best. See, a serial killer. Most serial killers have a type. Uh, Ted Bundy, he went for young women. He went for young women. He was an attractive young man. These attractive young women would gravitate toward him. They would feel at ease around him, and that's when he would attack them. Some serial killers target children. Some serial killers target young African-American men. Some target young African-American women. But they mostly all have a type. The Green River Killer, he, he targeted prostitutes and young women who were kind of lost, you know, the lost souls of the world, I guess. People who were easy to pick up. And uh, so most of these serial killers have a specific type that they go after. There are people who kill randomly, you know, and maybe they just pick up people that they come into contact with. But it's strange to think that a serial killer would target both men and women. Um, many serial killers are also rapists, and many of their targets are either younger children who really are defenseless, or young women. Some go after older women. Um, there are those who do kidnap and torture men, but... It would be strange to me if it turned out that these were all related to one person. Unless it was some type of situation where they were all involved in some activity or something going on in that area. But the one that's close, most closely related to her as far as time frame... Um, would be this David Campbell, age 49, of Big Creek, was last seen walking on the roadway near his home. On October the 22nd, two days later, Michaela Colette went missing. Um, bring people, then maybe they would, but if you study psychologically serial killers and, and and read about their histories and the type and if you look at their targets, if you look at their victims, you find that usually they are very closely related. Some of the some of these young women I uh, I'm just saying young women here. There is a, another serial killer out there that's never been solved that I know of. I'll have to do some research and see. The happy face killer. A lot of people believe that that was made up. They believe that people were just making this all up. But these young men were being targeted. A lot of people thought, this is just a coincidence. This is not a serial killer. There just so happened to be a drawing of a smiling face, a happy face, 
on a rock formation or a bridge or some some structure around where the bodies of these men were found. All these men were found in waterways, in 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 rivers, in streams, in creeks, and they were all a, a type. They were all young college aged men, seventeen to maybe early twenties, mid twenties. And they were not all in one localized area. They were they were around different parts of the country. So they believe this could have been someone who traveled. And a lot of people were just like, Oh, it's just a coincidence that this happy face just happened to be drawing up on the wild there. Come on, give me a break. If these were young women and these similarities they would definitely say, oh yes, this is definitely the work of a serial killer. But they just wanted to think, oh, these men just got drunk, stumbled off the cliff, and fell down into the water and died. No. Anyway, I'll get off on a different subject. This is all I can find as of right now about this case, but I am going to try to follow these Reddit threads about, about her. And if I find anything else about her, or about the second skull, if they come up with the identity. Um, as far as this Michaela Colette, my guess is that this has something to do with, and I could, like I said, I couldn't find any stories on this. I searched and searched. But I would say that based on the comments on Reddit and the supposed story that was told on Facebook and all the back and forth I heard this and I heard that this had probably something to do with the father of her son this is all just a big mystery because the news media has really been tight-lipped on this the police have been tight-lipped there's been no you know usually you can go to Kentucky State Police um, missing persons and, and they will be something you know, they'll just they'll just have a description of the person and say uh, what the circumstances might have been around their disappearance. But um, honestly, the only thing you know, there's really nothing. It's like they they kept so hush hush about this. It, it's strange. Now, let me see. This is from WL, WVLT, Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. This is February 16th, 2022. Uh, Leslie County, Kentucky. Close friends of 21-year-old Michaela Colette. Remember her as a great mother and friend. She was probably under two years of age when she died. So, um, just remember that kind loving woman you will ever meet another person like her again in your life says Chris Hoskins now apparently Chris Hoskins according to the reddit rumor mill and the posts that were made on there is the uncle of her little boy just months after she went missing they found my big brother Ben Hoskins dead he was the father of her child said Chris a skull was found in Clay County last year after flooding. I was speculating that what if the other skull was that of a boyfriend, um, you know, and that takes me back to who were these other missing people, you know. Uh, Stephen Best, that was before she went missing. David Campbell, age 49. I wouldn't. I mean, I'm not saying it's unheard of that a young a girl that young could be seeing someone that old, but um, it's not unheard of, but I don't know. It, tragic at first, but it gave us some relief, says the family, after her skull was identified. Hoskins just described Michaela as a big sister. I counted her as my family. She was just like my sister-in-law. Hoskins said they do not know her cause of death. We were told the family wants to bury Michaela next to Ben in Leslie County. So the way that the families are taking it is like they're not, 
the two families still seem to be um, close, maybe for the sake of the child, because now this child is an orphan. He has neither parent, and nobody seems to know the circumstances. They did not say the, 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 he just said my brother was found dead. He didn't say how. Was he murdered? Did he die from a drug overdose? Was it some self-inflicted death? Or did he just die from some natural cause? There's no information there. If I find out anything more on this, I will do an update. But as of right now, um, this family is getting ready to lay this girl to rest in the cemetery next to her child's father and look for answers. Thanks for listening, everybody.